People. Yes, sir. What's up, man? As as um the song says that I was listening to this morning, James Brown, I feel good. <laughs> yeah. And as the same song says, I knew that you would. <laughs> yeah. yes, James get you going. James, yeah, James. If you don't get going after James, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. <laughs> yes, sir. That is that is true for sure. What's up, man? Let's What's up? see here. All right. Those of you that are coming on, let me know that you're coming on. Good morning to you. Good morning, Lottie Dottie. I guess the brother's name is Lottie. We have to name the sisters Dottie. So Lottie Dottie, Lottie the brothers, Dottie the sisters, and everybody. Good morning. Don't walk up in my house and I say mm -hmm. good morning. We don't have to go through this every every day, y'all. We we we're to, <laughs> this family reunion happens five times a week. So I don't I don't feel like I have to come on here and every single, every time you walk in the door, I gotta remind you to speak. I need you to I need you to speak. Let me see. You you remember back in the day, and I I don't know if you I don't know if if you if you had this or not, but but my um my grandmother's house was the was the community house. <laughs> The one house that everybody came to, it didn't matter. And this was this was definitely back in the day, bro, because this was when when you didn't have to lock your doors. You oh, know, yeah, yeah, that's back and, in the and, day. And, and, and when people would, you know, you just arbitrarily people would just come in, hey, you know, because they coming to see. And my uncles were were usually at my at my grandma's house, so folks coming to see my uncles and my and my aunts and stuff too. So you yeah, had people rolling in and out. All the time, my grandma was always cooking because my mother, my grandmother was a cook. So, yeah, people always coming to get some good food and all that good stuff. So, but you didn't, you did not roll up in my grandmother's house. Oh, oh no, sir, <laughs> no, sir, and I not speak to anybody. Day. I know it's a new day, it's a new time, it's a new culture, but some stuff you just shouldn't abandon. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And yeah, you you get you go you get knocked in the mouth. <laughs> and, and we, we don't have to be family. You don't have to be now, family. No, we all family. We all. We all we, we, <laughs> you roll up in my grandma's house. We all family. So yeah, she gonna treat you just like she did up. Yeah, she gonna call some shit, bro. Oh boy, we all <laughs> don't, family. That's don't right. you come up in? Don't you come up in my house and not speak? <laughs> Hi, mama. Because we call her mama. We <laughs> she's mama Ellie. We call her mama. Hey, mama. <laughs> That's how everybody did. <laughs> I, I I knew of those houses. My mom raised us in a different kind of environment. Uh, so if I wanted that kind of community, I had to go to somebody's house. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. My mom held our house very sacred. Like, like, you know, she was raised in an era where her grandparents, she was raised by my grandma, but Okay. Her greatest influence really was her, my great grandmother. Grandmother. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. So my great grandfather, his name was Bucky. Bucky, big dude, right? Uh, I never met him, but I've seen pictures of him. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would sit at his in his chair with his hands like this, just kind of rocking back and forth, like say, uh, what's your what's your name? <laughs> uh, uh, Robert, Robert McGla McGaskin, McGaskin, McGaskin. Yeah, I know some McGaskins. They ain't no good. You can't be here. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't no yes, good. Sir. You, yes, you sir. Yes, sir. You can't keep. You can't come over here. And no, no. And, Aretha can't hang out with you. And see, that's the thing, too, bro. Our grandparents, great grandparents. It was about that name. It was yeah. about your name. Yeah, your name. Absolutely. Your name meant something. Meant, yeah, it meant yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. You it, know what I'm saying? Something good or bad, it meant. Yeah, something. it meant something. 
you yeah, know for sure she, she and it's right amazing that you would say that what's up coach good morning man coach uh yes i worked out today yes i am lighter than i was yesterday and uh <laughs> yes my abs are coming back i can see my abs just met with brother ken johnson he ready uh ken johnson tell me more coach about what you're saying ken johnson coach ken johnson uh financial coach tell me who you're talking about yeah uh so i'm 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 looking good i'm feeling good oh okay okay cool cool yeah yeah that's 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 my guy ken johnson uh, uh did you meet with him about our uh our event is that what we're doing or or is he going is he a client of yours tell me let me in on all of it stop talking in code let me in on all of it <laughs> fill your guts tell us all the the sisters say t uh i can't say t here in all honesty leroy has ruined that experience because he came on here with a mug <laughs> I'm never going to let him go. For those of you that are asking the question, when are you going to let that go? Never. I'm never going to let that go. He will forever be my brother that showed up on the Grown Man podcast with a mug with flowers in a flower pot that's pink. Like I, Listen, it's, it's ingrained in my mind. It's embedded. It's, it's seared in my consciousness. Did did I did I need to have my my flash, bro? Can you see that? <laughs> I, I can see that. What's that say? Child of God. Yeah, it says a man. child of a yeah, a child of God, a man of of faith, and then okay. it has warrior warrior. Thank should you, I put man. should Thank I you. should I put my tea in this? I have Thank my you. tea in this next time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I appreciate you, man. Oh, oh, so you didn't put anything in it. You just showing us that you got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have no, yeah, I don't have tea. I'm not I'm not, I'm not drinking now anything I'm this morning. More trouble. <laughs> because before I could kind of get away with saying, well, you know, that's his only mug. He, well, that's the only mug I got. That ain't the that ain't the the only only I could have I would have been better oh, if I put the get, tea in the red cup. You, you I put the I put the tea in the red cup next time. <laughs> <laughs> the red you cup next to put the tea in the red cup. You could put the tea. That looks like a tumbler, like like something. Yeah, that it is hot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell it me is. the reason why I'm I'm waiting. Tell me the reason why you would have tea, which could be kept hot in that, but you chose to show up on the grown man podcast with a pink mug, a white <laughs> mug. <laughs> pink oh, oh now the, it now is now it's pink. Uh. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting. He said that was pink. Now it's pink. Now I'm talking about <laughs> your choices because it's it's now about choices. <laughs> so now, now, hey babe, now it's about <laughs> now it's about choices. Look, <laughs> here she go. I let you use my pink mug. Don't be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, see, oh, oh, now Marlon hopping in on it. Why my mug got me pink too, Marlon? <laughs> <laughs> see, you know, what she's saying is, she says she'll let me use hers. I know, I know. But I'm not jealous of yours. <laughs> my and, mug was yeah. white, not pink. <laughs> it was white, not pink. Let's get it straight. The flower on there might have been pink, but the mug was white. Lee, 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 uh, Coach said, "Was it? Was it coral?" <laughs> <laughs> was it coral? Or was I, I I have no idea what that means. What is coral? Is that a version of pink? Because you know how they get, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know the women they give it ain't pink. It's mauve. It's whatever those other that's, cut that's variations. Coach, that's coach asking. Coach is asking whether or not that's coral. That's what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> was it like coral? I don't know what coral is. Is that is yeah. is that is that is that pink? Um, uh, coach <laughs> here here is here is here is what i'm troubled by though oh <laughs> lala said coral is peach oh peach lala okay 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 because see Marla i did see is on this uh every since i met her it's it's the most it's the craziest 
and most unique thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. She has, for the years that I've known her, we haven't been married a year yet, but for the years that I've known her, she has a system, a color system for every single month. Like, and, and if I don't dress in the color, then she's like, where, where, where's your color? Like this month is purple. Yeah. I don't, I'm not wearing anything purple. I'm going to wear black. Black is my color. Um, uh, Dwight, what's happening, man? Good morning to you, my guy. Can't wait to see you tonight. Uh, we begin to work tonight. Proud of you, bruh. Excited to have you a part of uh, the program, Remand University. Um, so I'm, uh, what's happening, Bernice? Good to see you. Good morning to you. Uh, welcome to the Grown Man Podcast. Good to see you this, this morning. Um, I am your host, Donald Morton, and I need you to know I drink water. <laughs> this is Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr., uh, and he drinks tea. The question isn't about what we drink. The question, <laughs> the question is about from what we drink, right? I drink from this, <coughs> right? This is <laughs> this is water. I drink Essentia. No shout out to Essentia. I just like Essentia. No shout out to it. They're not paying me no money. Um, Leroy, show the people what you drink from. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you go get it. <laughs> I know you what know, it's going to get. You know I'm going to do it. You know, know what what, 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 what. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Any of us have seen that this morning. <laughs> he, I'll do it. Oh, the brother. <laughs> we try to live lives of the utmost character in remain. This brother is violating all the rules today. <laughs> That is not what he drinks from. Uh, he, he drinks from a white yeah, mug. Yeah, dude. I drink from it. I just happen to have the mug that I drank from that day. Where, so, where is that mug, Leroy? Where's that mug? It's in the kitchen. <laughs> Where it's supposed to be. It's, it's in the Is it in the cabinet? Is it in the dishwasher? Like, it's in the cabinet. It's in the cabinet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I eat my ice cream out of it too. <laughs> it's convenient. It's the right size. Listen. Listen. <laughs> this is clown me for the mug I drink out of. <laughs> Dang God. I'm I'm troubled, y'all. I'm, I'm troubled. This is this is the grown man podcast. Oh my the God. First one. Look, 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 there it go. I was waiting for him to say something. <laughs> I know, Coach, I don't do it all the time. I can't have no ice cream. I can't have no ice cream, Coach. None. I don't eat. I, I, only, I ain't eating ice cream every day, Coach. I promise you, I'm not. If I have, if I have ice cream twice a month. <laughs> That's all it, is, Coach. This, this, I is, promise. this is what's crazy. Coach is a bully, man. That dude is a bully. You know, don't, don't let him don't let him chump you, Leroy. Tell him like like, I, like I told you, bro. Like I told you, with my grandma house, we all family. So coach is everybody. It don't matter who you are. <laughs> you say you say those magic words, coach gonna get on you. <laughs> he oh, gonna jump bro. all up in your chest. It I don't matter. What I eat. I don't tell him what I eat. I know. <laughs> I already know what he's going to say. <laughs> I already know what he's going to say. And so mm -hmm. <clears throat> I eat crazy every now and then. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I eat chicken and, you know, white meat stuff, vegetables. I've been heavy on vegetables lately. Green beans, yeah. broccoli. I've been heavy on that stuff and a little lighter on starches. Okay. Okay. Um, uh 
Hey, Boba Fett, Coach ain't no good. Coach ain't no good, <laughs> man. He is no good. He is a true fitness coach 24-7, <laughs> no breaks. <laughs> I ain't giving you no cut, no cut. You know, what, what, what is a, what is a, what is a cheat day? What, what is a cheat day? Oh, no, man, he, yeah, he don't, he don't do, <laughs> he don't do cheat days. Look, <laughs> hey, hey, look at your, look at your phone, Leroy. I can't. I'm on my phone. Oh, he's on his phone. Uh, let me, let me, let me show y'all <laughs> what Coach with his. Uh, can y'all see that? Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say? That's it's his mug. Uh, his mug tears, the tears of his clients. <laughs> He's got barbells and uh, success trains failure complains. Success trains failure <laughs> complains. complains. <laughs> oh, oh my, uh, see, my coach is happy with me. He said, "Good choices, sir." Yeah, I've been, I've been trying. <laughs> Uh, I've been trying to do a little, a little better. I'm still, um, I still eat fried too much. Really, uh, I like the, I like the flavor of, of fried, and so I've not. Um, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't do that all the time either. Uh, but I, I have been eating a lot more veggies, little less rice. And Marla will tell you that even when I eat rice or something like that, um, the portions are small in comparison to the protein. The portions are small, and um, and I I still don't eat it all. And and I've, so I've, I still got to find the balance. Uh, I I think what I'm going to do for real for real. Uh, and I'm I'm doing this the same way that I did coach when we first met. Um, I'm going to ask coach to live, to come live with Lala and I for a week. Um, I'm going to ask him to come, I'm going to put him up, have him live with us for a week so I can create a routine, right? A, a way of being able to get up now I'm on routine. So, so I get up every day, Leroy, this is my routine. I don't know what yours is. Uh, but I will tell you that mine does not include a pink mug. It doesn't it? Does, it, does, it just does not. Look, 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 la la. She does not like what I just suggested. She said I would starve. <laughs> She's like, nah, Negro. You, you can, you can, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not the one that's trying to. to shut it. No, sir. Go <laughs> put me on your regiment. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to make sure both of us. That girl is good. I was looking Go at ahead, her. Go ahead, Mala. I'm going to call him for it. Go ahead, fat boy. I'm not just. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, be, don't be making me. Don't be making me. Making me do that. <laughs> Coach said, I have a real question. Are there any faults, sins, errors greater than others? Falling short on one area, but excelling in another. <laughs> Are there any faults, sins, errors greater than others? Leroy, what you say about that, man? Are well, there any I think faults, sins, errors? Because <clears throat> I'm always well, well. Go ahead and answer, man, and then I'll I'll, I'll say what I gotta say. No, the only only one that I think the only I guess fault of sin, and I'm thinking he's talking in terms of of I, I don't know what it, in terms of, but I'm thinking just in not believing in who God is. That's the, to me, if you don't believe in them, that's the the one that's greater than any of the other ones. I think all the other ones, I believe are the same. We all go slip up, fall, you know, do, do something in our lives. And I don't think, I don't think we see them as any greater. And there's no, to me, the others may have a different opinion. I don't think others are any greater than, than the others to me. I think we, we all have, we all got our, our vices, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Where yours is going to be different from mine. Mine is going to be different from coaches. You know, coaches ain't food, but you know, but his 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 may be something else. Yeah. Whatever you know. So yours is <laughs> you know yours your your yours might be something, and and mine is something else. So it, it just you know I don't think any of them, and none of us can say. That's why I always up real quick. I always go to the story of the woman that they brought to Jesus. 
um, that they found in adultery. He said, all he said was let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. All he did was knelt down, wrote something in the <laughs> wrote something in the in the ground, then folks backed away because he probably was telling on them <laughs> yeah. what they did. Yeah. So and he said, Will your accusers? He said, All right, they she's like, they ain't, ain't nobody here. She's like, All right, go send no more. You yeah. know. I I don't necessarily and it is great that coach would even present the question. Uh we going at 1030, we'll we'll do um Leroy's segment, and then we'll go into putting the hoodies up after the segment is over. Uh so for those of you that are clock watching, because that's what y'all do, clock watch, um, to determine whether or not we are on time with our own podcast. We will do Leroy's segment in about nine minutes. <clears throat> My sense of spirituality, and I don't know whether it's this way for, uh, for you guys, for you, Leroy, for you, Coach, for, for Lala. Uh, My sense of spirituality is shifting. It's evolving, right? And and so <clears throat> for me, sin is any time I step outside of my own personal value system. Anytime I do that, anytime I am not in alignment with the, who God's created me to be and how he's created me to show up, I'm in sin. I'm not in sin based on the do's and don'ts of the Bible. I'm in sin based on who God has created me to be and whether or not I am actually living at the highest version of that. So for me, my PBS is very, very clear. And for right now, um, I am in sin. So I, I need y'all to hear me, right? Because <laughs> because what somebody going to do, Leroy, is take that clip right there. I am in sin. And you will see that on Facebook. I am in sin. IG, I am in sin. TikTok, I am in sin. <laughs> right? Um, because, and and my wife and I were talking about this this morning, that there are moments where transparency is not my best gift. It's not my best, it's, it's, it's out of all of the things <clears throat> that I am, transparency and authenticity is what I struggle with the most, believe it or not. And so when you are not transparent, when you are not intellectually and emotionally honest, I, I feel like that's sin. So is there a sin greater than the other? Yeah, the one that you're participating in at the moment. The one that you're participating in at the moment. And for me, it's not a religious thought. For me, it has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with Christianity. It has nothing to do with Islam. It has nothing to do with Buddhism. It has nothing to do with those things. It has everything to do with remaining fully aligned with who God has created you to be and what he has positioned you to do. Anytime you deviate from that, for me, that's sin. So I've been, I've been really spending every single day um, evaluating and auditing my own alignment. Evaluating and auditing my own alignment. So, Coach, does does either of those questions help at all? I mean, answers help. <clears throat> um, or did we even answer the question? Was was there another direction that you were really going? Um. So, y'all, uh, it is the day that the Lord has made. 
I will rejoice as an act of my will. Remember, mastery is a matter of will and skill, will and skill, will and skill. So as an act of my will, that's what your character is, your will. Uh, your skill is like leadership and legacy, how you manage those. As an act of my will, I choose to rejoice <clears throat> and to be glad in it. Leroy, what hoodie you got on this morning, man? Oh, this is this is my... my Maryland my Eastern alma, Shore. My alma mater hoodie, yes, sir, yeah, representing yeah. the Hawks. Yeah, yeah, the Hawks. And, and it says unapologetically... Pink. Uh, no, HBCU <laughs> educated. Unapologetically HBCU educated. Yes, unapologetically sir, HBCU educated... Because we blackity black this month. Blackity, blackity black, 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 black history month. Don't come in here talking about <laughs> black history month. There's black history month every month. Uh, this is blackity black, black, black history month. And I need you to say it with me. Say it loud. <laughs> I would James say. <laughs> James say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. I'm proud. proud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Leroy, you ready to uh talk about your uh who we talking about today, man? You've been having yeah. some real dope uh individuals yeah. uh, that you've brought to light. Reginald I think F. He, Lewis. I think um, you're gonna like this Wall one Street too. Yesterday. Um, yeah, you've been having some real dope figures to kind of jar our understanding and awareness. Yeah, absolutely. So I think y'all gonna like this one, and, and I did it intentionally. But I have this book here. I don't know if you know who this dude is. His I don't. Name is Herman J. Russell. Let, let's, let's, we, we, before we go into that, Lee, I apologize. Coach did yeah. finally respond. He said they <laughs> they do address it. I feel that as much as I hate that word. I fall short of my calling sometimes and it plagues my spirit when I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like if I miss a cardio session or get tied into admin stuff versus the development stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and coach stick around because I'm going to address authenticity today and uh, also just kind of share a bit about my own personal struggles um, because I feel like it uh, is going to help someone and I think it's going to help you today as well. So hang out with us, man, for as long as you can before you got a session that you've got to uh, kind of launch into. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm going to say some things that are going to help. Go ahead, Leroy, man. I apologize, bro. No, no, no. But um, one of the one of the, the heroes of the civil rights movement is this gentleman here. This is the title of his book, Building Atlanta. And mm. you and Lot, you and Marla will like this because this is the, the skyline that you see down there in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Because you know I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. By way of Delaware, right? By way of <laughs> Wilmington, right? <laughs> but his name is Herman J. Russell. Um, and and let, let me give you all some background on this gentleman. Um Herman J. Russell, he played a pivotal role in shaping the modern landscape of Atlanta and its surrounding areas through his significant contribution to construction and real estate development. He's a real estate developer Got it. Um, in his co <clears throat> company down there in Atlanta. Um, his journey began modestly in 1952 when he, when he founded the H.J. Russell and Company, initially focusing on plastering. However, his ambition and entrepreneurial spirit led the company to expand into the construction and real estate uh, sectors. Throughout the years, uh, he spearheaded the development of numerous iconic buildings that have become integral parts of Atlanta's skyline. One of, the, one of his most notable projects was the construction of the Georgia Dome which served as the home stadium for the Atlanta Falcons and hosted various high profile events, including the Super Bowl. Additionally, he contributed to the development of the Centennial Olympic Park, a key legacy of the 96 Summer Olympics held in Atlanta. His impact extended beyond individual projects. Uh, Russell's company played a crucial role in, in 
infrastructure development, contributing to the expansion and modernization of the city. From commercial spaces to educational uh, institutions, uh, his vision and commitment to excellence were evident in the projects uh, undertaken by H.J. Russell and company. His influence was not confined to construction alone. As a real estate developer, he participated in urban revitalization initiatives, contributing to the creation of vibrant communities within Atlanta. His commitment to uplifting the city neighborhoods aligned with his broader mission of economic empowerment and social progress. Uh, in summary, uh, Herman J. Russell's Im imprint on Atlanta's physical landscape is indelible. His construction projects and real estate developments have not only shaped the city skyline, but have also contributed to its economic growth and cultural vibrancy. Atlanta stands today as a testament to, to Russell's vision, dedication, and lasting impact on the urban fabric of the region. And he was not only instrumental in the um, real estate and development area, but he was also a vital part of the civil rights movement. Remember mm. when we talked about the financial backing? Yes. That was the brother that cut the checks. When when Dr. King and them was arrested, wow. he cut wow. the checks. <laughs> he wow. cut the checks to make sure, hey, that that everybody could get out of that everybody could get out of jail, bro. It, it phenomenal. I haven't read this is on my list to read this year, um, because I've had the book for a minute. But yeah, very instrumental in the civil rights movement and as an entrepreneur, bro, and the shaping and what you see in Atlanta, that landscape that you see down there in Atlanta. He more than likely was a part of the a part of the the building, the the a lot of those buildings that you see there that you see there in Atlanta, bro. Yeah. And and I also think um Dr. Bill Winston. You ever heard that name, Dr. Bill Winston? <clears throat> no. Uh-uh. Winston is a pastor in uh, Chicago. Uh, he pastors Living Word Christian Center, I think, something like that. Okay. What he is, what I love him for, though, is he's a straight businessman and a straight faith teacher, right? So this wonderful marriage between um, faith and business uh, mm -hmm. is kind of his call, right? He has developed banks he's de he owns an entire mall mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. inside that mall is his church right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um he wrote a book called prophet and king the relation i think something like that what's his what's his name again dr bill winston dr bill winston and a part of that book talked about the responsibility of the prophet as being vocal, right? In setting order and things of that nature. The responsibility of the king was to finance that which the prophet was vocal about. In every civil rights movement, in every movement, there, there are a couple of facets to it that I think you bring tremendous highlight to today. We don't, we, again, because King was so iconic, right? Yep. Because he was on the front page of every paper, because he was on the news, right? He he became the face of the movement. Right, right. Uh, Rosa, it. the face of the movement. But we would do a disservice to the movement if we didn't talk about that brother. Because King remains jailed if there's nobody <laughs> paying bail. Yep. All the attorneys, right. I know that they had attorneys as and well. Attorneys, that, right? That <clears throat> people that contributed to the movement. There are so many facets to a movement that all like like with the remain movement, this movement to restore brothers, right? Uh I'm privileged to be one of the one of the faces of a movement, right? Uh you got other guys, Kenneth Braswell. Patrick Patterson, other guys that are doing tremendous work, particularly in the fatherhood space. I pay homage to those brothers. Those brothers have been doing it a minute. So we are faces. David Miller, we're faces, right? But let's be clear. 
uh, the people that give to remain, Leroy, <laughs> right? The, there is no <clears throat> there is no movement to remain a nation and a world without contributions of individuals that make it possible for us to do the work. And and I want to I want I'm glad I'm so glad I know I got the right guy to do it because you are, are picking up people I've never heard of. And if I've never heard of them, most likely others have not heard of them. Uh, so that we can shed light on those who have been silenced or whose participation has gone unnoticed, right? Um, that is tremendous. So now when I go downtown, <laughs> right, yep. I, I have a different lens through which to appreciate it all. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing when I, yesterday I went outside, I just sat on, um, uh, what's the the electrical box? We have one in our front lawn. I hate it, uh, but but I sat there and closed my eyes in the front lawn and just appreciated God. Mm. That was a part of my day, right? A part of my day is reconnecting and, and reconnecting until I can stay connected, right? Um and appreciating things that surround us every single day that we don't always appreciate, I think, is really, really, uh, really important. So great, great Black History moment. Did I say it right? Nah, yeah. this ain't Black History Month. This is Blackity Black, Black, Black History Month. And we just highlighted a brother that was responsible for a great deal of the vision that we see in my hometown, of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. What was the what was the title of Doctor Winston's book again? Um, you said King. Did you say Kings and something? Kings and priests, I believe it is. Yep, Kings and priests. Cool, cool, yep. cool. Very, very good book. Very, yeah, very and good. I, I definitely, definitely want to check that one. This out. marriage of faith and business. Very, very good book. Yeah, and, and some people they they kind of I, I think when when we think of of business and uh and and faith, some people think that they that there isn't this merger because you mentioned uh Dr. Winston here, but I also think of of Pastor Floyd Flake. I don't know if I don't know if you're Absolutely in New York. In New York, man. That that dude, <laughs> you know, so you have you have men of 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 you know men of faith who have great business minds. Bishop yes. T D Jakes has a great business mind as yes. well too. Yes. I, when I when I look at the from look at it the 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 business uh, business and faith and I look at it through those lenses I'm like here are brothers that are doing great things that show you that there can be there should be this emergence of the or this fusion of faith and business yeah because it's necessary yeah so those pillars two of yeah. the pillars is yeah. business yeah and and the other one is the church yeah. And, and we've got to have them and there should this should be this intersection of them. And, and I them always well. like to like I think when we say for me, at least uh, this is this is just again, ladies and gentlemen, this is my own evolution that's happening. My, right. I, I think. There are so many when when we say the church, there's so many pictures that emerge in a person's mind. Right. When you say the church, you have a particular context. When I say the church, I have a particular context. When when um, somebody else says the church, they have a particular context. And so. I I really am viewing spirituality in such a way now that is far more broad and appreciative as my personal connection with my creator. God, uh, the spirit of God. Um, and, and while I appreciate the sacred writings of every single religion, right? Uh, Christianity has got the Bible, Jews got the Torah, uh, Islam has the Quran, 
right? So I appreciate every sacred writing for me. What I have learned is that there are principles, the foundational principles that are in those writings that, that are absolutely spiritually true and effective. And when you, when you abide by them, uh, you get results. Those are spiritual laws there, right? But I'm also learning the value of an interaction with God that requires us to stay connected and committed to hearing his voice. Because there are certain things that the Bible won't tell you to do. It just won't. It's not going to tell you to do that. It's going to give you a foundation. It's going to give you some principles. But if you really want to know what to do next and how to move, um, how to be agile, which is a part of what we're going to talk about today, you're going to have to have a personal connection with, with God. You have to have it. You are limited if you only have a understanding of the scripture. You are limited, right? You're very, very limited. Um, so, so I'm, I'm so, so la la, we need to go downtown, have dinner or something, uh, so that I can look at, uh, the skyline. Uh, and you heard it here first. And this is, uh, this is, uh, Marla, I know something that you didn't know. You probably working. So you couldn't even hear what Leroy had to say. So just act surprised when I give you this history lesson I'm going to give you later on today when you when you when you come home. <laughs> All right. Let's put the hoodies up. Time to work. Let's go. Time to work. Um, uh, good morning, people. I don't know what we're going to do during the summertime when, it, when, oh, when it's I'm, hot. I told you I'm going to wear the hoodies during the summertime, too. <laughs> you trying to make somebody pass out. <laughs> See, I tried to get away from the whole idea of the hoodies. Oh, uh, I love it. I love the idea. And, and I love you, it, man. This is it. This said, is our thing. Ain't nobody said, else putting no hoodies on. Ain't nobody uh, else putting no hoodies ain't on. Nobody bro. putting the hoodies up. Ain't nobody putting the hoodies up. You absolutely no, sir. Right. So so we just need a lighter version of the hoodies because 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 if we put these on in the summertime, yeah, we're gonna have to continue to. Somebody gonna have to continue the podcast because we both be in the floor. <laughs> we, 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 we both be like, hold up, bro. Hold up. Lala said, get some t-shirts with hoodies. <laughs> like I, I think I have one, right, babe? I think I have I have a uh a Nike one. It's that like a light, a, it's like a, a light, yeah. Nike I think one. I've seen it doing what she's talking about with t-shirts yeah, that have a yeah. hood that have a hood hood part to it. They're they're yeah. lighter, like you said, a lighter yeah. they're light. lighter <laughs> version of it. That's a good yeah. idea. That's a good idea, Mom. That's a, yeah, that's a good so idea. I'll, I'll, I'll uh I'll do I'll do that. Um yeah, I do. Yeah. So I have I have a lighter version. Sometimes I'll I'll wear it. But it's all things, listen to me. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what y'all say. It's all things remain. You're not it's not all things Nike. That's right. So I'm building I'm building my uh my wardrobe with all things remain, particularly things like this um polos you're gonna see with the remand logo like why would i wear another brand why would i wear nike why why would i do that no i'm gonna wear remand i'm gonna wear mastery it's the mastery brand God, oh boy. Oh! i'm having a good time today all by myself that's what they say in church when you roar <laughs> I'm having a good time all by myself. All right, y'all. Leroy, so this is this is what I really want to talk about today. And it's a uh, somewhat serious topic, right, that, that I'd like to get into. Well, we, we, we know all of our topics are serious because this ain't the Cotton Candy Podcast We're the, show. We're the Cotton Candy Podcast. <laughs> Five blocks down, look for the green awning and make a left. Make a it's left. Right there. You, right there. Don't, don't make a right. Don't make a right. Make a left. Five and it's right down. there. <laughs> right. Five blocks Five down. Block down. <laughs> yeah. And you, you'll find it. <laughs> what, what, what would you say is one of the greatest barriers? Earlier today, what, what would you say is one of the greatest barriers to authenticity 
And I, I, I want to I want to give you a scenario today. Transparency and authenticity are probably one of the least recognized superpowers in business and in family that uh, you could ever experience. Right. Um, authenticity and transparency, this 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 unique ability to be authentically you in a world of copies. In a world of copycats, in a world of um, individuals who are only interested in being like someone else, being authentically you is a superpower and it will make you uh, more rich. And I'm talking to brothers in particular, more rich than any other thing. One of my uh, who is becoming a friend of mine. Like I, I value the relationship that I am developing with Markwell Russell, right? And Markwell Russell, authenticity and transparency. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Markwell Russell, if you if you ever if you ever meet him, like he he's a former dope boy, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if you ever if you ever look at Markwell, you will see he got gold teeth. He's tatted everywhere, right? And when he's on stage, um, he's on stage with a backpack, right? Uh, a um, either a hoodie, a t-shirt, a polo, boots, <laughs> like, like. And if you ask him to come speak, that's what you're gonna get. Like, you you're not going to. He's not gonna dress up for you. He's not going to be anything other like he is not interested in satisfying anyone else's opinion of what you are supposed to look like. He is only interested in satisfying who and what God has created him to be and what feels good to Marquell. Right. April Franks. If you know April Franks, April Franks is not uh, she. She is probably uh, one who sparked Leroy this journey for me as it relates to authenticity. When I first met April, she has also become and is becoming a dear friend of mine. Right. Uh, when I first saw April, bruh, that chick was doing her hair in eyelash. She was taking her hair out online. Right. <laughs> so she was taking her hair out online, doing her lashes, cussing everybody out because her eyelashes wasn't working. Right. Like and, and her thing is, she doesn't have a GED. She doesn't have a high school diploma. She doesn't have a degree. She doesn't have any of that. And she says she is unapologetically herself. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't. You don't like it does. It just doesn't matter to her. So she shows up unapologetically herself all the time. What do you think, bruh, are the barriers? If, if I were to suggest to you that authenticity and transparency is a pathway to success, what do you think? And I'm interested in what you guys would say as well. Just kind of put it in the chat. What do you think are the barriers to authenticity and transparency that keep us from living out loud who we genuinely are and not who the world necessarily wants us to be. Well, I think everything to me, every any barriers that we talk about, and, and I say this about anything, everything begins with, with the mindset. So the number one barrier to me, to authenticity and, and transparency is our mindset. Yeah. The, the the thinking, what how we what, what we have in our minds about transparency, and what we our, what our mindset is about authenticity, and and you say it all the time. You say, <laughs> what, what is it? Our thoughts, our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and actions. Yes. What we think moves us in whichever direction we're gonna move in. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So that becomes the to me that becomes the barrier to 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 authenticity and transparency. Though the the individuals that you that you just named they were able to their mindset was be to, from jump street their mindset yes. is i believe in who i am yes i'm not going to allow the exterior see I'm, I'm 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 using the skills that you gave me to listen yes. and to be able to, to get poured into from yes. you yes. to be able to say the 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 at my exterior conditions don't dictate who i am absolutely that that's that's where that's the core to me of authenticity and transparency because if I, if i if i have the right mindset about who i am who i am why i'm here absolutely i i go through everything else i can i can step on the stage like you said Marquell, in being jeans and a t-shirt and not think about it i can be muhammad ali and say with this country, I don't. I'm not. I'm not going over there to fight. Fight for this country. I should be fighting you. They, they, the Vietcoms ain't never done anything to me. He can do that because his mindset was, I'm, I'm me. I'm going to be authentically me. And and if you like, like you said, uh, April, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Are most That's, people okay with that? Are most people? No, okay they're not. With, okay. Nope, they're not. And and that's evident in if you look at social media, if you look at the, the, the life we live in right now, most people, they allow themselves to be to be told who they are through the social media lens. And, and, and you'll hear them. You hear them say on it on on all the time on social media. Well, social media isn't real. Well, in real life. Well, if if social media isn't real life and it has to do with people that are on social media, that means you're not being authentic or transparent. You're yeah. living the lie that 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 I've got to live up to this expectation. I've got to live up to this to this image that others want me to have. Transparency and authenticity is about living up to to the image and and the image that you have belief that you have in yourself. Yeah. And you, do you live up to that? Those that are comfortable with who they are have no problem with, with asking the question, like you were saying this morning, am I living up to who I say that I am and, and who my God says that I am, the, who created who it is that created me? Am I living up to that standard? And, and it becomes, you know, uh, we, we've just so many people. I mean, look at the. When you look at the the entertainment industry, and I don't like using uh, athletes and entertainers um, because everybody talks about them, but they're the ones that people are most familiar with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they they spend, like I told you, Fantasia. I said this yesterday. Fantasia talked about telling people, "Nah, that's that's not what most of these folks are doing. They're not living the lavish lifestyle. They're not living the lifestyles of the rich and famous," as as uh, Robin Leach used to always say. They, 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 they are they, they're living this this image to living up trying to live up to this image of who people who they think people want them to be or who people say that they are when you allow the exterior to control who you who you say you are and not be authentic then people can tell you who you are and that will change correct dr king didn't allow anybody to tell him who he was. Brother Malcolm certainly didn't allow anybody to tell him who he was. You know, Mr. M Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Russell didn't allow people to tell him who he was. Because if he to believe that back in the day, he wouldn't have built the, the he wouldn't have built, he wouldn't have been able to build what he built down there in Atlanta. Yeah. So yeah, bro. It, it's it be it all begins that 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 first obstacle, that first barrier is always our mindset. I, I, wanna, I want to um, I want to spend some time on Coach's question. First, uh, Coach, thank you for the question. Um, and I, I'll put it up again. Uh, are there any faults, sins, errors, greater than <coughs> others? falling short on one area but excelling in another. Libra, how would you how would you answer that, bro? 
I think you did, right? Uh, you talked about you talked about it from the God perspective, right? Is there mm-hmm. is there one thing? Is there one sin greater than the other? And you talk about you talked about a non belief in God, right? Being a sin that is greater than the others, right? Was that your position? Yeah, that it that it's it's the unforgivable sin. Okay, the unpardonable sin. Okay, yeah, unpardonable. Yeah, unpardonable sin. Um. And you arrive at that place because uh, I want to I want to take us out of Christianity for a moment. Mm-hmm. I want to take mm-hmm. us out of the Bible for a moment. And I'm going to ask us to explore something a little deeper um, because I know exactly where you get um, the unpardonable sin. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I definitely get that. But let's say for a moment, neither of us were Christians. Both of us are card carrying Christians. Both of us. Um, are uh, uh, I'm Gary mess with Marla. Both both of us are now now Leroy. If you have not been down in the name, Marla said you ain't saved. Marla said if you ain't been down in the name, um, uh, if you've been down in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you ain't saved. But if you've been down in the name of Jesus, and you speak in tongues and and you say we're la la at la la <laughs> la la is apostolic. I think I think because 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 here's coach's answer. This is why he brings the brings the question up, which I think is a brilliant thing. He said they do they do address it. I feel that as much as I hate that word, I fall short of my calling sometimes. And here's the problem with, here's the problem with coach's position. He he says he allows the fact that he falls short of his calling to plague his spirit. Right. You allow, you allow uh, missing a cardio session to plague your spirit. You allow getting tied into administrative stuff versus the development of your business to plague your spirit. Leroy, what would you say about that? Well, I I would I would say first, coach, I think you're being a little hard on yourself because to me, the administrative part is a part of the business. It's a vital part of the business, because if you don't handle that back end. Ain't no front end. <laughs> you, you really can't. So it's a functional part of the, the, the business. So I would say don't because you miss a session that that's going to be, you know, because you have to now if you missing the session because you have to do administrative stuff, then that's the matter of scheduling to me where you, you have to schedule the administrative aspect of your business. Just like you schedule those cardios, you know, those sessions, you got to schedule the administrator if you're going to have a full functioning aspect of your of, of your business and, and not feeling, you know, bad about it because those are that's a different part of the business. I would feel bad if, if you miss both. It shouldn't be either or there should be a both and with with those because they're vital parts of what it is that you do on a daily basis. You know, it's just a matter to me, it's just a matter of 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 scheduling the time for both. And yeah, things come up. This is life. So there are gonna be times where, where things happen. Do do I do I do I get upset sometimes when I'm when I'm snacking and I know I shouldn't be? I'm eating pretzels and, and I'm eating potato chips. Yeah, I know I, I know I shouldn't have had this. I know I shouldn't have had that soda. You know, I know I should have gone, I should have did my walk. You know, missing the missing missing different aspects of it, but it, it it isn't about to me. It isn't about missing them every now and again or something like that. But are you consistent, Coach? Are you consistent in missing those 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 uh, those sessions? Do you consistently miss them, or do you consistently make them? That to me, that's the difference. You're committed to it because I believe you're committed on both ends. You're committed to it and you're consistent with it. 
So in our consistency, it, are there times where we make where we miss the mark? Absolutely. I know I do. <laughs> I know I do. And and the thing is, we can't allow ourselves to stay there. That's my thing. Yeah, it happens. But are uh, you saying we get in we get in our we get in our way of of you know of getting down on ourselves or we may be in a bad mood. Question ain't whether or not you get in a bad mood. That, that's a part of emotions. Question is, do you stay there? How long do you stay there? And, I, and I've always had this belief, man, that God gives us 24 hours to boohoo, cry, do whatever we're going to do, feel bad about ourselves or whatever. But once that 24 hours is up, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you keep and you move on to the next. And that's how I approach not being perfect. Yeah, I'm not perfect. I missed it. All right. Okay. I got a moment. <laughs> but after that moment, pick myself up, dust myself off, and, and move back to what it is that I know to do. That's that's what I would say to that. Man. It's it's amazing, man. Um oh, we we you and I deal with businessmen, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, you know, remand is the Mecca for black businessmen. Um, this challenge that coach is having comes with growing a business, Mm -hmm. right? It, It comes with growing a business. Uh, the challenge is that I can get buried in tweaking and miss the window to do the next task instead of doing what I tell my clients is what they are human, uh, is that they are human and entitled to errors, but I have a very hard time giving myself <laughs> the same grace. <laughs> um, well, that that's also, that's also a mark because I'm not of the opinion I'm not so so let's let's do a couple of things first right coach let's let's segment see if we can do this skillfully because this is something that I have to train brothers to do is something that I have to train myself to do over and over again I and my purpose are two different things. Who I am is not what I do. Two different things. I am responsible for executing my purpose, but the fact that there is an I and a purpose means that there's an I or an individual behind the execution of the purpose. And when we are not fully aligned where we're not doing the soul work, the character work to build who I am, my purpose suffers. So what I see when you say, let's face the arc together. Those of you that are watching, you get a kind of a, uh, a glimpse at to how at I'm getting ready to coach coach. He is a session. Y'all better take notes. You get the session (laughs) because you get a chance to see. Uh, what we do and how we do it. Uh, but I'm a coach, 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 coach is a client of mine. Uh, we are mutual clients of one another's. So, <laughs> so uh, I am a client of his. So now I get a chance to punch coach in the mouth online in front of everybody. And the way that he punches me in the mouth behind the scenes, right? I get a chance <laughs> to punch him in the mouth. So if we were to if we were to face the character arc, um, I think your challenge. Uh, if the character arc has spiritual, it has responsible at the responsibility, ethicality, mastery, uh, authenticity, nobility. Right. Um, but before we can get to the larger arc, let's talk about who you are as an individual, because when we start. Leroy began the conversation, right? When he started talking about thoughts, feelings, and beliefs. If you you got to, I got to ask you the question, coach, what thoughts do you have about you and your work 
that are creating these feelings that you're experiencing. Tell me what the feelings are. Tell me what you feel in this moment. Boy, this, we, we get ready to give you all gold. We get ready to give you all gold. Hey, coach, I'm going to send you, I know you may not have a hoodie on. Do you have opportunity to come on stage with us so we can do a live coaching session? Um, you have you have that moment. Let me know in the chat, man, and then I'll send you, I'll send you the invite. I'm gonna send you the invite anyway, and if you can come on, uh, cool. If you can, I understand. <clears throat> All right, I sent you, I sent you the invite, coach. Let me know whether or not you can, uh, whether or not you can come on. So the and and I wanted to do it this way because asking the questions this way going to take some time to get the questions in for for you to type it in so on and so forth. Um, but anytime you're attempting to kind of figure out, you know, what, what's this feeling that I got? You got to be you got to be emotionally honest about the feelings that you're feeling. Feelings are great indicators; they are horrible navigators. So, so somebody type that in the chat for me, right? Mm -hmm. Feelings, we, 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 we all have feelings. Leroy just talked about it. You, anyone that says that they don't feel, there's coach. You said feelings are a great indicator? Great indicators, great locators. They are horrible navigators though. Coach. Yo. Listen. The, the answer to all of your problems is drink more water. <laughs> drink more water. Uh, work out 17 times a day. And, he said 17 uh, times, a day. 17 times a day. I got, I got one in this morning. I always work out before. Uh, Lala hops in the car and goes to work. And so. I always work out, Coach, this, this doesn't really have anything to do with what we're about to coach you about, but I always work out. My favorite workout right now is January 20th of this year. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a free Saturday workout. It's the one I use every single day. Uh, it's the one where you always, where you tell us, in honor of National Squat Day, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's that one uh and and it's one that you've done recently that that is even more tough than that one that that i really enjoy um but it's getting my abs back so coach talk to me about talk to me about what fit what feelings uh and don't don't use the lazy feelings right if you need yeah. me to kind of give you the feelings wheel, I, I, I can, guess. but just kind of tell me what feelings emerge when you miss a session. I, I find myself beating myself up by not completing what I expect other people to do. Right. I pride myself on getting up at three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. getting the bike, doing my cardio, taking a shower, go to work and hit it hard from 5 a.m. until I go to bed at night, right? Mm -hmm. And and during the day, I also like to work out midday when there's nothing going on. It's like it, it's crazy how today's podcast is what it is, and, and the two people who come in got medical procedures they got to get done today. So this space just kind of. And then yeah. I read the title today's thing and kind of pulled me in. Yeah, it's amazing how God works. But you know, yeah. it's I find myself not sometimes not being able to hold myself to the same standard of. Walter, you're still a human being. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes 24 hours is 24 hours, and there are other things that take precedence. So, like today, for instance, I'm planning out the next five months on my calendar mm -hmm. because I've got a lot of shit going on mm -hmm. coming up, right? Mm -hmm. So, just to kind of give you guys a peek in the best, we got a lot of things going on. And in April, everyone's competing in a pilot thing, all the ladies and all that kind of stuff, right? So, I'm putting together some content for for that to help. Um, when I put the, when we go set national records, I'm sending a package to ESPN, USA Today, all that stuff to kind of boost up what we do to show we're empowering women to make changes in their household, family, et cetera. Um, we're doing a trunk and truck, um, Easter food drive. So the day before Easter, we're going to take a, my SUV full of food and my friend's pickup truck full of food to the food pantry down the street. 
we're sponsoring the mud girl run and then the culmination is going to be my retreat that's going to be in august so that's just kind of the next five months here all the while i just started my prep for my next bodybuilding show which is going to be sometime. so let me give you an example if you were not to if if any one of those things were to fall through what would you feel like a failure okay like a failure yep so 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 if any one of those if any one of those things fell through, you would feel like a failure. And in mm -hmm. feeling like a failure, if that is the belief or script that is created as a result of something that doesn't go well, you then now act as a failure. Everything that you do from that point on will be funded by or fueled by this failure kind of position, mm -hmm. right? Here's here's what uh, those of you that are watching should always know. My thoughts can come. My feelings are going to give me an indication of what thoughts are, are happening. Look, look, don't be lying on me about who be <laughs> saved. I heard you earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you said Leroy ain't saved. So. So. All beliefs are y'all. For those of you that are watching, listen to me. All beliefs are are codified thoughts they are thoughts that went unchecked that's all a belief is a belief is a thought that went unchecked and when you have thoughts that you don't check right you don't you don't face they become a part of your spiritual dna and we always act, always understand this, y'all. We always act in line with what we believe. Mm -hmm. Always. There, so, so people that say, you know, uh, I believe in tithing. I just don't tithe. It's because you don't believe in tithing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, right. People that say, coach, I believe in, I believe that working out will will genuinely improve my life but i don't work out because you don't believe that working out will improve your life mm -hmm. what we believe is actually what we will do here's the here's the here's the thing though while i can't control what thoughts come to my mind um and i i can't necessarily control the feelings that emerge as a result of the thoughts i can choose a different belief I can choose a different belief and I've got to choose a belief that gets me to where my expected end is. So this is the this is the next part of the conversation, coach. Does something that doesn't go right create these this belief of failure? And does that belief of failure get you to your goal? Does that does that get you to being the world class? You're already world class, but your business world class, your clients, like, does that serve your clients for you to have that belief? So if something doesn't go as I wanted to have 20 people at my retreat. The last one just happened. Right. I yes. wanted 20 because my yes. I wanted 20. I yes. had five. Yes. And we kind of talked about that. Right. Yes. And and I adjusted my thinking from the thinking, thinking to kind of like we said, I got five, not yes. I only got five. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, so so the immediacy of not completing the task or not getting something across the finish line or fully birthed, at least in the version that I thought it would become. Yes. Um, that kind of feeds into the I lacked somewhere. What didn't I get done along the way? And what happens if something doesn't get done? It makes me OK backtrack a little bit backtrack a little bit. what did i miss what did i miss what did i miss the whole six sigma thing that i have you know from a train that i've had over the years and years and years and that's kind of where i get stuck sometimes on the revamp 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 instead of saying okay this is what it is it's there let's keep going forward obviously you're going to try not to commit the same error that you did along the way i think that's kind of where i tied into the same thing right it's it's i don't like to be late i'm not uh but if i'm late late you know mm -hmm. but i tell my clients if you're late that's your time mm -hmm. and, and i and i find myself feeling convicted about holding folks to that standard the same thing with failure the same thing with not accomplishing something i tell folks don't beat yourself up about it but here i am like fuck walter you fuck me. <laughs> yeah 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 you, you see what i'm saying so yeah. 
it's it's it, it, and I think that's kind of the genesis of the is something worse than the other. It is me it, it, when I focus on something that I can continue to develop, or should I take more time under the hood, uncovering all right, this the, all the what ifs. You know, I'm I'm kind of the MacArthur theory of of a good plan executed violently and on time is better than a perfect plan two weeks too late. So I'm, I'm more of let's go guns blazing and let's get it done. And then sometimes some stuff falls by the wayside. But when that happens, that's kind of when that negative loop happens, at least for me. I don't know how it is for the other folks out there in the, in the metaverse, but for me, that's kind of what happens. Um, and I don't want to suffer from lack of preparation. I'm always going to be prepared, but I don't want to miss an opportunity because I'm charging forward. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so again, the character arc at the very center of it is this is this thing of mastery, right? And mm -hmm. mastery's mastery's other word is growth. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to grow and not fail. It's impossible to do. So when I develop a mindset that failure is a part of the growth journey, failure is a part of the mastery journey. Coach, when um I, I think I think I got the vernacular right, man. Correct it if I don't. Uh, but what do you call it when like like today? Uh, I was working up, working out. You had us doing five push-ups, five second, right? Five mm -hmm. rest, five push-ups, five. What is it? What do you call it when you do as much as you can do? As many reps as possible, right? Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Isn't isn't it a word like reaching failure or reaching? Failure. Right. It's called failure. Is, is that what it's called? Yeah. It's called it's failure. failure. Mm -hmm. So I want I want to use your own language to help you out of the moment you're in, mm -hmm. right? Doing something until failure is exactly the goal. The goal is failure. <laughs> the mm -hmm. goal is to do as much as I can do that proves to me, this is the language that you got to use, right? It proves to me just how far I've come, uh, just how much I've been committed and it also shares with me how far I've got to go in order for me to get my goal. Failure, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, failure is not a bad term. Failure is given meaning by the one experiencing it. <laughs> failure is not a bad term. It's all a part of the journey, right? Um, and the truth of the matter is all of us are right now getting the results that we are getting based on the person that we are right now. It's okay. Like there's, there's, there's room for growth for Donald Morton. There's room for growth for Walter Sellers. There's room for growth for Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr. There's room for growth, but I want to celebrate the failure. I want to celebrate the fact that I have failed. I've reached my limit at this place. Good. But I've got some, I've got some other places that I've got to get to. And the question becomes, who do I need to become to get there? Not what do I need to do to get there? Who do I need to become to get there? And that's why we've got to segment and separate who I am, right, from uh, the purpose I have. Walter is not a failure. Walter experienced as much as he could experience in this moment. It's like for dads, right? Dads are often given a bad name. And I say to people all the time, uh, your your dad gave as much as he could at the time he could for the length of time that he could, right? Uh, and and once we look at things like that, it helps us to be able to make some shifts in our lives. So mindset is important. Being able to to honor the journey, not the destination. Honor the journey, not the destination. It's not the destination. It's not whether or not I did what I was supposed to do today. To your point, it's about Hey, who did I become? I want to celebrate the awareness that you had, right? Hey, um, there's something in me that is asking of my clients something that I've not been able to uphold myself. Mm -hmm. And being willing to say, now I'm a bit different. I believe in being hard on ourselves. <laughs> I believe in being hard on myself. Right. Because the only way to reach 
mastery is to be hard on yourself, to be hard on yourself. Uh, and when I when I've created emotions behind it, I understand them. Emotions, emotions don't rule me. So just because I'm having a moment, they, they don't rule me. They're locating where I am. But now I'm going to take where I am and I'm going to regulate my emotions, emotional intelligence, and I'm going to push past it. Adversity quotient. Right. And I'm going to develop a discipline to do something different tomorrow than what I did today. I'm going to always give myself tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So. It is sin because all sin is, is I did not live up to the best and highest version of myself. I'm not aligned. There's something I'm not aligned. So usually what happens is uh, and what I want to coach you around is don't try to do something different tomorrow. I'm asking you to to find out where the misalignment is in coach that is not allowing you to show up and do the things that you need to do in order for your business to get where you need to go. It's an internal journey. One hundred percent of the time. Right. So so that's the That's the challenge that I want to put before you today. I want you to go in. I want to give you an exercise that I that I want to give everybody this exercise. Do you recognize that right now, if you're you're sitting or if you're laying or if you're laying on your back or if you're laying on your side, there is no possible way for you to view you. If you look at external means, there's no possible way for you to view you. You're always looking out. For once today, uh, and then I'll, I'll let you get back to your workday, coach, uh, and we'll talk about it a little later today. Set up a time for us to for us to talk. Sure. Right. I want to give all of us an exercise of closing our eyes and viewing ourselves the other way. And the reason why I want you to do it that way is because all of it. All the parts of our journey are internal. They're inside. And we have that we've been trained to view everything externally. So the question becomes, what do I need to do? I hate that question. The question is, who do I need to be? There's a version of Walter that has to emerge in order to be the million dollar business Walter, that CEO. And a part of your frustration is because you recognize that you are not being him. Mm hmm. Right. Being him requires systems. Being him requires staff. Being him requires mm -hmm. letting go. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I know anything about Coach Walter Sellers. <laughs> right. We, we are both control freaks. And I'm going to tell you, control freaks don't work at the million dollar level. We got to trust people. Right. And we got to trust and we've got to trust people after having been let down by people. Right. Right. So when 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 we're violated by people and they let us down. And then I'm not saying we got to trust the same people. I'm saying we got we still got to trust people. We still, right. Right? We still gotta trust people. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't. So so there there's someone that needs to be dealing with your administration. Leroy's on fell down. You see? I see. It's that red solo cup. <laughs> I've fallen. It's a red solo cup. It's that red, red cup. cup. <laughs> that, red that wasn't cup. tea. That wasn't tea in that cup, though. That was not tea. That was not tea. That was look, look. It was Hennessy, not tea. <laughs> it was Hennessy, not tea. So, so I want you to check a couple of boxes with the character arc, right? I want you to do that spiritual work that I just asked you to do, mm -hmm. but I also want you to check the excellence box. Okay. The excellence box, right, is the nobility part of the arc. It, it's the ability to do three degrees more every single day. It's not the ability to be perfect every single day. It's the ability to do three degrees more. So, for example, in the mornings when I'm working out with you, right, uh, whenever you say stop, I give it a little more. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't stop when you tell me to stop because I don't like listening to you. I stop know. when I want to stop. Only because I'm not there. Watch this, watch this, Leroy. He just told on himself. Because right, he, exactly. He did he? Did he? That he, means that he doesn't uh, do uh, enough uh, on the preceding uh, reps. That's what that means. That means increase the resistance. 
But that's another mm-hmm. story. Another I'm day. not going to increase the resistance. No, I sir. You. I feel no, you. sir. Last I feel time you. I increased the resistance, my rotor cuffs t- tore or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I don't even want to do it that way. But but here's the deal. Mastery is, is and this is why mastery is the goal. Mastery right. is the ability to be comfortable with being inept at the next level. Mm-hmm. And being inept at the next level requires trial and error, failure. It requires it requires all of that. Okay. So when I have a certain feeling about that, it's because I'm used to being adept mm-hmm. at something. And now I'm inept at the next level. Everyone that is watching is adept at certain things. Right. But but like like I'm inept at what, you know, like I'm in comparison, I'm. That's why I pick up the phone. I mean, vice versa. Look, 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 like, like I'm, I, I'm willing to to expose my own faults, which is hard. Right. But I know that there has to be another brother out there that's battling the same shit. Absolutely. And and it, they may not have the same conversation you and I have all the time. Right. Maybe this helps them too, so that everybody can be better. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That matters to me. You know, it's it's not just about me. It's it's I want it's enough for us all out here. Yeah. Just, how can we all help each other? Yeah, yeah. So so the other thing I want to celebrate about what you said today is you were aware enough not to let the thing get out of control before you did something right. about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? There are a lot of brothers who, who just let their lives get out of control. Uh, and then they say, hey, Dr. Moore, what do I do? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you, you, we, you, you should have contacted me. We still got work to do, but you should have, right. you could have contacted me two weeks ago when this became like, like when the brothers, when the brothers feel like cheating, like uh-huh. I'm going to tell you to cheat. I'm going to tell you to cheat. Like I'm going to tell you to get, get the monkey off your back. But if you cheat, be willing to tell the truth about the fact that you cheated. Yep. Tell the truth to the brothers, tell the truth to your wife, tell the truth to everybody. Yep. Right. So so what we find is that some of the things that we have really been that have been challenging for us. um, And it goes back to authenticity, because when I'm authentic, I'm also it also gives myself permission to be agile, to make the kinds of adjustments that I'm going to need to make so that I can get to the place that I ultimately need to get to. Right. Uh, What I'm proud of is that you saw the little thing that was that was growing mm-hmm. and got to the root of it. Uh, and so now I'm asking you to choose another belief. That's your spiritual homework. What belief is going to get you to where you ultimately want to go and what belief uh, where you currently are, uh, you have been successful in getting there. So it has worked for you so far, but what if I were to share with you that what has gotten you to where you are uh, ain't going to get you to where you want to go. <laughs> right. There, there's another Walter that has to emerge in order for you to get to million dollar business, which I believe you're on your way to uh, very, 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 very quickly. But it requires a different version of Walter that, um, you know, that that you're going to have to become uh, in that process. So so I want you to check. I want you to check excellence, paying attention to detail gives birth to superior performance, looking at, okay, uh, because not showing up on time, that's not excellence, nope. right? Not, or letting certain things go missing sessions, that's not excellence. And we're always after excellence, but mm-hmm. we have to be agile enough to say, okay, because I only got 24 hours in a day, what can I take off? What, what do I need to delegate? What do I need to do? And I've got to become uh, a real CEO in order for my business to thrive. And I know how difficult that that is because we love what we do. We love the hands on approach. Like like the other thing that you're going to have to come to terms with. And then we'll talk about this offline. We'll get off of here is that. You are going to have to start coaching coaches and let coaches coach clients. Mm -hmm. Your days of coaching clients, as much as you love it, is coming quickly to an end. Because mm-hmm. you can't do it. Right. You have your job now is to train an army right. and deploy them. You're at that stage of business. 
right? Okay. Which I was happy when I saw one of the uh, trainings, you now have head coach Walter Sellers. Right. Uh, head coach Walter, which denotes that I got other coaches. Coach. That, right. You're going to have to trust already. them. You're going to have to right. pour into them. You're going to have to trust them. And the clients are going to be disappointed. That's why it's important for every individual to be solid, to do the work. Because mm -hmm. if you're not solid as an individual man, then when everybody starts complaining and being upset, then we'll respond to that instead of knowing that these are a part of the growing pains that grow business. Right. Right. So Leroy says, what was it that you did to get the five out of the retreat? Repeating that process will elevate the next one. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The truth of the matter is, again, what gets us to one point doesn't necessarily get us to another point. And we have to ask the question, not what do we do? The question is really, who do I need to become? Mm -hmm. There's a version of Walter that attracted five. Right. There's a different version of Walter that attracts 20. Right. And there's a different version of Walter that attracts 200. Right. Those are different versions of Walter because that those different versions of Walter do things differently. Right. So it's not that I have a challenge with um, what has to be done differently or what has to be done the same. I think those are secondary questions. The primary question is this version of Walter didn't produce 20. Right. And the goal was 20. Right. So I got to go inside and ask myself the question, what's my thoughts? What's my feelings? What's my beliefs that led to the actions that I performed that got me five people instead of 20? Mm hmm. Those are the kinds of processes internally that we've got to that we've got uh, to be able to address. So the questions about doing, ladies and gentlemen, are always important. They're just not first. The questions of becoming are first. Okay. Who do I need to be? It's be, do, have. What I have is a result of what I've done and what I've done is a result of who I've become. Okay. That's the way that it works 100% of the time. And we are somehow fixated on what do I need to do differently? I get that question from brothers all the time. What do I need to do differently? What do I need to do differently? My wife is upset. When, what can I do differently? That's not the question. That's the next question. Mm -hmm. The question is, who have you shown up as? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and coach, I'm going to send you a. Uh, a couple of links of some books I need you to get because you're at that stage that you absolutely have to be a CEO. Okay. You're at the stage where you could become, if you're not careful in this stage, you can become the bottleneck in your own business. Right. Right. Um, and it's going, it's going to, it's going to create more time for your wife and you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for you to do some other interests. Uh, but I will just end by saying you and your purpose are not the same. Your identity and your purpose are two different things. Don't allow the, the challenges that exist in your purpose to kind of craft an identity. Right. Right. Because right. your identity is separate from, from your purpose. Does any of that help, man? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> enthralled. You know, the, the smack in the face right away. Who I am is separate from my purpose. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know, They're not the same. Not the same. They're not the same. Mm -mm. They're not the same. And when I'm clear, but but I, I will, if I'm not careful, if I have them intertwined, when, I, when something is not going well mm -hmm. in my purpose, then I'll have it. I'll have a tendency to create that to have that create a different identity right? than, than right. who I am. And it'll, right. it'll cause me to feel bad, shame, all of those things right. come as a result. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good work, man. Definitely. I appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time that we've ever had a live coaching session <laughs> uh, on the Grown Man Podcast. Uh, this is the work that we do. This is a glimpse of the work that we do. Um, and this is the reason why this brother does the work. 
Um, he demands that I do the work mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to physical fitness, eating and all of those kinds of things. I demand that he does the work. And guess what? This is what I know about him. He going to go do the work. <laughs> he is. It's, it's just who he is. Um, so. So, OK, coach, Good. I'm kicking you off the stage. Leroy and I, we're going to take, take the hoodies down. <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. Leroy, what you say, man? Nah, I, I hope people appreciate what they just saw. Yeah. The, those that are watching it live and then those that will watch the replay. This is the work that goes into facing the arc every day. Yeah. This is yeah. part of what you, what you have to be able to do. You're not going to always have, <laughs> you're not going to have the privilege of having Donald Morton there to talk you through right, things. Right, bro. But having the ability to be able to understand what the arc is and then being able to understand, okay, how do I process this? How do I be, do, and have? And I love that tier. Yeah. Be, do, and yeah. have. Yeah. And don't get that there is a specific order to it. Yes. <laughs> you got to yeah. be before you can do, and then you got to do before you can have. Absolutely, bro. You get, if you mix those up, it, it will not work. Absolutely. It's not going to work. So understand that to get to trans, get to where we were talking about this morning, yes. in order to get to the authenticity and the transparency and being who that is, you got to, who do I need to be? What do I need to do? And, and then I will be able to have the authenticity and, and the transparency. And I want to shout out coach, man. Like, like that, yeah, was, absolutely. that was the absolute epitome of transparency. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. You know, coach, coach is he an alpha male. Mo, mo, you know, uh, ain't no doubt about he, it. He, yes, he an alpha male, right? So he's not, uh, and I guess I shouldn't really use terms like this, but he's not the soft cat. He he just he's just not. He's he's an alpha male, right? Um, and to see an alpha male say. Hey, there's something, there's something off. Like, like th this is the manifestation that I'm getting. Right. And that's what I wanted to be clear about today. The manifestations that you're getting are a result of this process. Like, like you are getting what you've become. Right. So, so for him to show up authentically as an alpha male with a thriving business, he's doing incredibly well. Right. To say, hey, um, let me ask a question. Like, like, let, let me. Let, this is this is what this Negro does. Let me co-op the bro, the grown man podcast. I gotta ask a question. <laughs> and, but but no, but it, it it goes to what what we were talking about today yeah, because bro. he said, and and I love it. Like you said, the transparency and the authenticity. He was like, I wanted twenty. Yes, yes. I didn't bro. get the twenty. He could have been yes. said, yeah, I got twenty. I, I mean, I I'm good. But no, he said, I wanted to be at 20. And there's a reason why yes. I didn't get to 20. Yes. What's the reason why I didn't get to 20? You know, yes, I, I, I got five and I'm grateful for that. Yes. How do, how do I go from five to getting to 20? Right. And appreciating the journey, right? I think, yeah. what, I think what we got to do is appreciate the journey. And to your point uh, that you asked, hey, what you did? Uh, do more of that. And that's, that, that's a part of it. It, it really mm -hmm. is. It's a part of it. Do more of that. But that ain't the first question. So the only, mm -hmm. the only thing I push back on is let's get, let's make first things first. It's always mm -hmm. spiritual first. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. thoughts, what thoughts did you have? <sighs> what beliefs did you really have? <laughs> What beliefs did you really have? Not not the ones that you tell us, because all of us say we got strong faith and all that. All of us say that. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah, that, that doesn't but get you. That doesn't, doesn't get you to where you need right? to be. So, so the evidence of character working is the manifestation of success in these three domains. Period. That's the way to measure it. If my marriage is still goofy, I can't call myself a marriage. A, a a man of character no not yet not not full in its fullness you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it's all a journey and life has this thing leroy will it will continue to test you 
It is. It, it's going to continue to test you, right? It's absolutely. It's going to test you on the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, uh, so, so man, that, that, that was, that was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that was, was just good. really, really solid. And so those of you brothers that have been, it's one thing to get your hands dirty brothers. It's, it's one thing to have calluses on your hands. It's a whole nother thing to have calluses on your soul though. When you do this soul work calluses on your soul, oh my God. <laughs> That's when we know you've really done the work. Go ahead, Leroy. No, nah, I'm just going to say it just goes to what, we, what we've been talking about, where I said when you ask the question, what's the first What's the first obstacle? What's the first barrier? It's the mindset. All of it starts with our mindset and, and moving. It, your thoughts, mindset. Your feelings, mindset. Your beliefs, mindset. Your actions all have to deal with our mindset. What mindset do you have in each of those levels that you that you find yourself being on? Yeah, yeah. And, and then you can choose another one. You can choose another one. This is the brilliance of the character arc. You can literally choose another belief. Who says that you got to keep the same belief that you have? We believe in stuff differently all the time. Who like, like you have a set of beliefs that have been crafted over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my, my job is to help you interrupt that. Yes, sir. No, that's, that's the actual, that, that's what you that, always that's say. That, that's what you do. You are, <laughs> you are here to interrupt yeah. those beliefs, that belief system that you have, because obviously that belief system is not working. So we've got to interrupt it. We've got to stop it. Figure it out Absolutely. and then and then move figure out what needs to what Absolutely, needs to change bro. in it and Absolutely. then change the belief system before you do anything else. Boy, that's so true. So so I've seen some other things. Uh coach, I, I man, thank you. Uh thank just thank you. Uh because today yeah. was divinely ordered. It really, really was. Uh forgot nothing. Not I, I one of the things I'm learning, Leroy, is nothing happens by accident, my God. Oh, absolutely not, bro. Nothing happens by <laughs> it, accident, right? God You've is been intentional. This providential <laughs> thing for, for a while. You and I have been talking about this providence thing, and uh you you talk about it a lot. Uh there, there's nothing that happens by accident, nothing is a matter of luck, right? This this whole life is divinely ordered. Yeah. So it is divinely ordered for coach to feel what he was feeling, think about what he was thinking. Um, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Coach. Absolutely, man. W without, without question. So Leroy, what's the final comments you got for the day, man? We out of here. We are, we a bit past time, but this is our gift to y'all. Um, and it may not have made sense to any of y'all what was actually going on. Uh, some of y'all like, yo, what is happening here? Right. Uh, but this is <laughs> we, my love done, for another brother. We done told right? him. Yeah. we. <laughs> yeah. This this is the work that we do. You're not going to see this anywhere else. Yeah. Brothers, you got a glimpse, just a, a small glimpse of, of what is comprised of a remand, the remand project and what it's all about. And, and understanding that. So I hope hope those that will watch on the replay, that will watch on YouTube and, and, and the other places when you watch this, whether you are a a, a, um, a, a CEO of a company, you know, right. you're working as a CEO, whether you are a, a, a brother that's trying to, to 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 figure things out with your family in life, all of this, the, the same principles apply to all of it. That's the genius about this. I tell them all the time, but that's the genius about the about the character about facing the character arc and being able to understand it. And and I I I really hope that people will understand and appreciate this live that you just did the set the live session. Yes, sir. That you did that you did with with Coach. Yes, sir. And 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 CEOs, please see that. Understand what he said when he says you. There's a difference between the CEO and and you having and, and running your business. There's a difference. Yes. And and who we need to be and be able to understand and, and being able to walk in that, man. This is this has been powerful, bro. This is this has been powerful. Really, powerful. So and thank this, you, this, and Coach, for being transparent and authentic enough to, to do this live. Because you the coach could have been like, nah, I'm not I'm not talking about this. And, and if I was if <laughs> I a, a Leroy, if I was a fraud, 
It was gonna show today. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach, Coach, you can't fake this. Man. Hey, I got a question. Look, look at what Coach said. He sent us this in the back chat. Yeah, this was legit, live, and unscripted. And unscripted. This was not. We didn't plan this. Not at all. We didn't plan this. And the truth of the matter is, while I'm clowning, it, it really is true. If I didn't know what the heck I'm doing, yeah, that could have went horribly wrong. <laughs> real fast, real fast. Because <laughs> coach, coach is not the kind that's going to run. He's not going to roll with it if if he like, yeah, uh, Donald, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's coach. You know, that, coach, coach, coach is, right? is truly authentic and transparent. He's truly bro. authentic. So he's not going <laughs> to, if, <laughs> and that's why I say, man, does any of this help? And it's like, absolutely. Because yeah. if I say, if did any of this help, the brothers of Remain will say, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need nah. to go back to the lab. You need to go back to the lab, bro. Because <laughs> what was, oh, all right, real quick. I saw, and I don't know if you saw them or not. And, and I'm sorry, y'all, but um, uh, uh, Kyrie Irving has his new tennis shoe. Okay. Right. And so they they had on my news feed, they showed him and they got the picture of, of him shooting in the game last night or whatever. And he has the shoe on. Okay. I guess last night was the debut of it. And I was just like, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. I'm, I'm not feeling it. the design, the colors. I'm just like, no, I'm not feeling it, bro. I'm just like, yeah. Well, so are you not having it? people? OK, tell me why you're not feeling it. No, I didn't. Like I said, I didn't like the design of the yeah. shoe. Got it. The design of the shoe and the color. Now, maybe and not even if he were to do it in a different color, because there was somebody that did suggest, hey, maybe if you did it in black, you know, yeah. you did this and it might be a little different. I don't like the design Got it. of the shoe. Got the it. Design. That's just like them, uh, the ones that Kanye had, the Yeezys or whatever they were called. Yes. Yes. They were the ugliest shoes ever. I'm like, no, I wouldn't buy those even if it was in my favorite color black. Yeah. Because I just don't like the design yes. of it. Yes. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you you go ahead. And there were people that loved it. Oh, it's Kyrie. We should so support Kyrie. Just with no, I'm not supporting something just to support it. Absolutely. If I'm not, you know, because we say that all the time. We're we're not just doing business with black businesses just because you're a black business. Absolutely. No, you got right. you got to have good product, good service, something that I believe in, and that Absolutely. um that is going to make my you solve my problem. Absolutely. You you assisted coach in solving his problem today. Absolutely. That that's that's why we're on the planet. Business owners find a problem to solve. Yep, that's it. Find a find a problem to solve. Lala said, "Great show, Lala. You need coaching <laughs> when you walk in the house tonight. Just lay on the couch. I got you. You need you need coaching. <laughs> Thank you, babe. Um, find a problem to solve. Yes, sir." Uh, Lala yes, says, summarize for Crystal. Yeah, Crystal. So we were talking about, yes, ma'am, Lala, I'll do that. Uh, and then Crystal, uh, will, she'll go back. She says she'll go yeah, back. Yeah, she said she's going to watch the replay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> coach coach told me, don't get, co don't get cut, bro. <laughs> I know, right? Coach, no. <laughs> yeah, Coach. He out here. Out here. Out here. He talking bad. But back there, when, when, <laughs> when Marla come home, she gonna get you bad. <laughs> look, look at what she said. I need coaching to live. I need coaching to live with you. <laughs> yeah. So we, we were we were really talking about the power of authenticity, right? The superpower of authenticity. We were talking about um, how authenticity really creates this sense of agility, right? Being able to know who you are allows you to pivot in a space as long as you don't leave who you are, genuinely are. Uh, coach then just came on, he asked a question uh, and the question that coach asked caused us to really address um, uh, a challenge that he was having in his business. And so we uh, live coached him on the air uh, and uh, were able to solve a very real problem and challenge that coach was experiencing. Coach is, uh, in many regards, my ideal client, right? Th this is who I'm after. Uh, somebody who gonna tell me the truth, um, somebody who 
uh, is willing as much as he knows, particularly about his business, willing to say, hey, this Donald has on lock and I need to make sure that I get, you know, I'm connected with someone that can coach me in this area. So, so yeah, Crystal, go back and check it out. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal time. And um, we'll be back tomorrow. Same back time, same back channel. This was a little longer than normal uh, because we had a live session. And I mean it when I say, boy, your boy would have been exposed as a fraud. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, if you are for real, for real coach, then you can do it when it's unscripted, <laughs> right? If you <laughs> like, I can call coach tonight at 1130 and say, Hey coach, uh, this is what's going on. He's going to say, okay, Donald, this is what I need you to do. Cause he's done it. Like, so, so you gotta be, you gotta know your stuff. Um, and what he did do today though, you know, uh, I'm going back. I'm going to look at the character arc another way today um, because he he exposed something that I saw that uh, I'm going to spend some time with it today. So good work. <clears throat> uh, Leroy, anything else, man? No, I just, I love Go get it, your bro. mug, man. Go get your mug. Let the people see. I'm, mug I'm not running into the kitchen to get no mug, dude. <laughs> That's all right. Tomorrow, the, tomorrow morning, I'm going to have my mug with my tea. Ain't no ain't no flowers and flower pots on that man's mug. What's wrong with you, man? This the girl. Listen, y'all, we love and respect y'all. We will see y'all tomorrow. Peace. Deuces. <laughs>